Hello, Food Wishers. It's Chef John. How are you doing today? A beautiful day in San Francisco, where we are coming live to you from. Uh, we'll be in Kismet later today, by the way, doing a little work. But anyway, wanted to uh, sneak in a little hour-long chat here before we take off. The official topic is uh, creative summer side dishes, which is kind of a weird topic, because after I posted it, because apparently you have to pick some kind of topic, you can't just chat, even though that's pretty much what we do. Um, I thought about creative summer side dishes, and I don't think I've ever shown up at a picnic or a cook or a barbecue and looked at the spread and saw potato salad and macaroni salad and coleslaw and baked beans and whatever else the typical items are. And I don't think I've ever done that and then said, I wish these were more creative. I wish there was like some other stuff here. Um, so anyway, I, I'm not sure of my own topic today. I need to trim the mustache. But anyway, um, and the hair needs to get cut again as I uh, go off on a tangent. But anyway, so creative summer side dishes, I am not sure I'm even interested. But maybe you will change my mind by forwarding some of yours. Uh, what do you like to eat uh, that's not the typical boring old stuff I just described? So I'm up for a few new ideas. Uh, if that's, you know, what you got, what you got for me, uh, or you could verify my belief that we should just be eating the same, you know, same boring old stuff. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, if you're new to the chat, don't worry. If you don't want to talk about summer salads, rarely do we stay on topic. In fact, we never stay on topic. Uh, I just read comments and questions. Uh, I thank new members. By the way, if you want to ask a question uh, and type stuff in, uh, just go ahead and join the hit the join button and become an official food wisher is what we're calling you. Um, so it like uh, NAFAM 2000. Welcome aboard, Janie. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And again, another thing, if you've never been to one of these. The, uh, my chat scrolling thing will freeze in place, and then it will shoot by with 8,000 questions. So anyway, here we go. All right, Jim uh, has a good question here. Uh, well, yes, it's sort of side dish related because it's talking about garlic, which, you know, should go in pretty much everything. Is there any big difference in flavor between finely grated garlic and garlic mashed in a mortar and pestle? Well, technically there is. Just like there's a difference between sliced garlic and minced garlic, and there's a difference between minced garlic and finely grated garlic. So the more you break down garlic, the more you mash and crush those cells, the actual cells that make up the garlic, um, you release those volatile compounds. I forget what they're called. Uh, alan, alan, alides, alilase, analase. I forget. Culinary school was so long ago. But anyway, there's a couple compounds in garlic that give it, at, give it that hot, sharp, raw garlic flavor. And the more you crush the cells, the more that comes out and it gets a stronger, more intense flavor. That's why a beautiful, uh, homemade aioli that you smash in a, in a mortar uh, is like the ultimate aioli because it just has the most intense flavor. So yes, technically uh, smashed garlic is going to be smashed finer than just grated. Uh, so that would be a little stronger. So there you go. Uh, Rebecca is excited. Me too. Thank you, Rebecca. Char wants to know what was in the rotation last week. Uh, the short-term memory ain't what it used to be. So uh, I'm not sure I'm remembering all the things. Uh, Michelle made a beautiful uh, fava bean and, and garlic scape pasta. I remember that. That was very memorable with the last of the scapes. Uh, speaking of which, if you haven't seen the uh, picking of the, the harvesting of the garlic video, definitely check that out. Um, and so, yeah, that was one thing I remember. Uh, a lot of sandwiches last week. We were doing some traveling back and forth. 
So we were, you know, living on tuna sandwiches and uh, with a side of potato chips. And uh, we made a couple soups. We had a nice potato soup last night. So no, nothing too exciting. Uh, Marty P. wants to know. Oh, Jim, hold on. Before I get to Marty P., let me thank Ronaldo for joining. Thanks, Ronaldo. Um, Jim says that my big fat Greek salad is a side dish for summertime fun time. Yes, that is a good one. And I guess that's kind of creative. You don't see a lot of Greek salads uh, at picnics and stuff. So uh, that's a good one. So I guess we, we would count that as creative. Uh, Marty P. has a brazing question. Uh, some say lid on, some off. What's the deal? Well, classically, braising is always done with lid on because you're braising your meat or whatever in liquid and you want that liquid level to stay the same. So the only time to take the lid off when you're braising is if you want that liquid to reduce. But then you're not really braising because the liquid reduces and your piece of meat just starts roasting. So it's a little tricky of a question. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, a lot of times, like say uh, some short ribs or something, we would braise with the lid on until they're almost tender or tender, then take the lid off. And if you want to put them back in and let some of that uh, moisture evaporate from the sauce or what will be the sauce, uh, that's a good strategy. So really, like almost everything we cook, there's no one rule. You have to, uh, you know, what do we like to say? That's you cooking. So what do you want to accomplish? Do you want less liquid in your pan? Once your meat's cooked, take the lid off. Do you want it to stay exactly the same or within reason? Uh, leave the lid on. So very, very basic, sort of. Hey, Grape Tomato Girl, good to see you again. Hello, Scott. You know, I can't say hi to everyone. Come on, let me just say hi to the new members and uh, I'll randomly pick a couple. Uh, Annabelle used the four little emojis that they made me do to get this uh, thing started. The chili pepper, the hat, the spoon, and the knife. Uh, yes, that is all original Chef John art, by the way. Uh, thank you very much. Very, uh, very artistic. I still have no idea what those are for or why people use them. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Uh, I assume you're being sarcastic. He says the mustache and hair look great. Uh, a little bit of sarcasm in the morning is always good. Uh, jo uh, Jocelyn wants to talk about uh, Bon Appetit's test kitchen watermelon carpaccio. What do you want to talk about? Do they thinly slice uh, watermelon? and call it carpaccio. Uh, if they did, good for them. Uh, but it's not carpaccio, of course, it's thinly sliced watermelon. Uh, having said that, I have no problem with those kind of gimmicky dishes. I think they're fun. Uh, in fact, just between you and me, uh, I saw, I've seen a few times on the internet, something called watermelon pizza. Uh, and in fact, Michelle just recently saw it and called my attention to it again which is a wedge of watermelon that looks like a slice of pizza and they put stuff on it, fixins and toppings. So we might actually post that. That seems pretty easy. I'd like to do an easy video once in a while. So uh, let me let me see if I can do something with that later in the summer. Watermelon's not that good now. There's nothing worse than a rushed watermelon. Uh, Char Mund, roasted carrots or roast carrots with roast broccoli. That sounds pretty good. That's a good side dish. Um, if I posted a Moroccan roasted carrot side dish, probably not. I've been thinking about that one, but, uh, I don't think I've actually posted it. So, uh, silently cooking wants to know, is there such a thing as too much garlic? Yes. There's a, such a thing as too much anything, but I don't know. I would have to actually taste the dish and see what, you know, what's going on with that. But, uh, I, I think you can put too much of any ingredients uh, in a recipe. So, Abriana, thank you very much. Simon, thank you for joining. Uh, again, if you're new, I always raise my voice when I see a new member. It's very exciting. Uh, so, thank you very much. Uh, Ronaldo wants to know. Oh, no, Ronaldo doesn't want to know anything. He just says, Greetings from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Love you, Brazil. Uh, how do you find your recipes? James, I find them from you guys. I read all the comments and uh, while I don't respond to many of them, I read all of them and people are like, hey, this whatever looks great, but can you make this? And then I'm like, sure, I can do that. 
uh, or Twitter, of course, Instagram very occasionally. So uh, I hear things through all the different social media outlets. And whenever I see something that strikes my interest, I will put it in my, uh, you know, my little uh, calendar thing. And I'll have a list of food wishes to be done in the future. Uh, Heatheria, Heatheria, am I saying that right? Um, has a ton of beets. Need to figure out what to do with them. Um, I love beets just roasted. Actually, let me let me preface this by saying I'm not a huge beets guy. I have, um, you know, an on again, off again relationship with beets. Uh, I never like get excited when I see them on a menu and go, oh my God, the beets, they have beets here. But I do enjoy them on occasion in the right dish, prepared correctly, which I'm about to describe. So for me, the best way to do beets is roast them. I'm not into boiled beets, uh, notwithstanding an occasional borscht, which is a great soup, of course. Uh, but just roast beets, uh, peel them, and serve them with goat cheese, a nice walnut vinaigrette, vinegar, uh, wine vinegar, walnut oil, salt, pepper, and then some toasted walnuts. And really, that is a meal for me. I could eat that anytime. So I would say uh, heathery, heatheray, uh, make a big old giant roasted beet salad. And uh, there you go. There's a creative summer side dish, roasted beets. People will be knocking over the macaroni salad to get to that one. Trust me. Um, Jean Jew did not grow up eating American food or going to barbecues, so your common summer side dishes are still pretty exciting to her. Well, that's good. Um, you haven't lost your side dish innocence. But trust me, after 40 years of eating macaroni salad, some people are like, can I get some beets? Uh, five years ago, I would have said, can someone drop some beets? But I've grown out of that phase. Um, ben, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any jokes from videos that are your all-time favorite? No, I don't remember any jokes. Most of them I don't even do on purpose. I just say things on the cam you know, on camera or to the microphone, not necessarily on camera. Um, so I could not recap any jokes. Sorry about that. Uh, Peter Fiss, uh, Chef John, you often use olive oil, but rarely specify whether it should or should not be extra virgin. Well, let me let me clarify. We only buy extra virgin olive oil around here. Uh, the brand, I think it's called, uh, that I get most often, California Olive Ranch, does one called Everyday. It's got like an Everyday sticker on the bottle. And it's, you know, their lesser expensive one or more affordable, depending on the euphemism you want to use. Um, and that's just for everyday use. Now, there are really expensive, super awesome, fruity, like don't cook with this, expensive extra virgin olive oils. They use on salads, drizzle over grilled vegetables, fine. Have a bottle of that around too. But regular old olive oil, just utility, extra virgin olive oil is fine for pretty much everyday use. And that's what I use. So nothing too, uh, nothing too uh, complicated. That's why I don't specify whether I'm using extra virgin olive oil. I'm always using extra virgin olive oil. And again, I'm really just bothered by this mustache part I got to trim. Um, the salt is overtaking the pepper, people. One of these days, you're, I'm going to show up. In fact, I will unveil it on a live chat. I'm going to show up and it's going to be gone. So uh, that's what happens when you get older. You have to shave things off your face. But it's fine. It's all part of the growing process. Uh, Jeff, I've done your cook jalapeno pickles, but I still have an excess from two extremely productive plants. Any ideas? No, Jeff, but if you find out any ideas, you let me know because I have two uh, jumbo jalapeno plants that are, I think, gonna explode with peppers uh, in a few weeks to a month. And I'm gonna be in the same boat. I'm gonna be asking people online, what do I do with all these jalapeno? Um, you know, I like them stop, cut in half lengthwise, uh, a brief fire roasting on the grill, and then just pipe in some cream cheese, sort of a quick and dirty cheater jalapeno popper method. 
I think those are a nice appetizer. And yes, that would count as a creative summer side dish. Excuse me. One hand, everybody. All right. Uh, Melody, good job on Hawaiian shrimp. Thank you. Oh, very common question we got after that video. Uh, what made that garlic shrimp Hawaiian? Which is a good question. Because when you think Hawaii, you don't think, huh, they use a lot of garlic over there. Um, so what makes it Hawaiian garlic shrimp is just that apparently, and I've never been there, like I said in the video, I'm afraid to go because of what happened on that Brady Bunch episode. Um, but what, apparently what makes it Hawaiian is that it's just really popular there. And there's like trucks and stands and restaurants and they are famous for their garlic shrimp scampi. So that's why they call it Hawaiian garlic shrimp scampi. Uh, very, sometimes these answers are simple. So nothing about the ingredients made it Hawaiian other than maybe the fresh seafood. But uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, thank you, Abriana. Abriana, I think that's uh, how you say it. Uh, long view, peppers, mushrooms, squash, marinated in balsamic vinegar, then grilled is what to bring. That is a great idea. A platter of roasted vegetables or grilled vegetables, always a great creative side dish that people will appreciate above and beyond the normal stuff. Uh, yes, peppers, mushroom, squash, perfect combo, well done. Uh, Grape Tomato Girl made the baked beans and rice last night. Uh, always a hit with the family. She used quinoa and mung bean. Uh, so it was a uh, kind of an updated version by her. Very Southern Californian of her. I believe she's in San Diego. Uh, by the way, that baked rice and beans, you just gave me an idea, Grape Tomato Girl. That leftover tossed with some oil and vinegar is a great quick salad. Uh, so you eat it hot one night, make a salad out of it the next day, bring it to the picnic. Everyone thinks you're a star. Thanks, Harlan. Thanks for joining. Tasty, thanks for joining. Uh, if you're thinking of joining, come on, please do. Our goal for one of these live chats is 10,000 new members. Uh, we often fall short of that, I will admit. But that's our goal, 10,000. Come on, make it happen, people. Uh, Katie Kenny made chicken riggies and buttermilk pie this week. Thank you. Both were delicious. Yes, chicken riggies is a very, very underrated recipe. And it's not a side dish, but a big old pan of chicken riggies at a picnic. Come on. That would be good. Why does it always have to be stuff off the grill? Bring regular food to picnics. I think that's a good idea. Steak Diane, one vote for tapas recipes. Yes, I should do more tapas recipes. Uh, Spanish food is a, a great love of mine, and uh, I've never met a tapa I didn't like. And I think I've told this story in other chats, but let me quickly recap a little funny anecdote from many years past. I ran into an old friend who I'd worked with uh, in a restaurant many, many years earlier, and I asked her what she was up to, and said she said she was working at the topless place down the street and I was kind of taken aback because she didn't seem like a you know exotic dancer type of type of person so uh, anyway we talked back and forth for a few minutes I was just so confused uh, and then eventually I realized after she said their uh, whatever it was some item they served uh, the garlic shrimp or whatever were amazing I realized she was saying tapas and then it all became much less confusing but anyway, yes, I love tapas. Uh, Ian wants to know if I can show how to make Schwab's Fred steak. Schwab's, what's a fra Schwab's Fred steak? Do I have to Google that? I can't Google during a chat. Uh, I would need a second laptop or an assistant. Michelle's actually getting ready to go up to Kismet, which is why you're not hearing as much laughing in the background this, this week. So apologies for all the people that turn, tune in for that, but she promises to catch up next week or two weeks. Um, Jim, they don't have to be side dish related. If you got questions, throw them out there, people. Cher says, Allison, Allison, the garlic compound. Anyway, I'm gonna have to Google that too. Uh, Abriana, where should you get your cookware? How do I know? What's your budget? Uh, I don't do specific recs necessarily. What I do tell people is, any of the major brands are very good. 
Um, I have like everything, uh, Staub and I mean, just name all the brands. I have them. Uh, so whatever the highest reviewed brand set, whatever you're looking for in your price range, that's a good buy. Um, there's not like, all, if you take like the five top frying pan makers in the industry today, there just is not a humongous difference in quality between those pans, in my opinion. Uh, having said that, I don't, I, I'm not up on that. I'm not like a, an equipment nerd. So some people are, and they, they have lists, the best of this and the best of that. Go read their stuff. It's more accurate. Um, I generally just use old stuff I've had for 20 years, and I don't know the difference. Um, so anyway, I've never much help with these kind of questions, where to get your cookware. Um, now, one tip, if you have a uh, new big, you know, big-ish city near you, or you live in a big city, there are always a couple what, what's called restaurant supply stores. That's where the restaurants go to buy their stuff. Restaurants aren't buying you know, frying pans on Amazon. So if you live near a city, Google restaurant supply store, go to a restaurant supply store. They usually have great prices on pans and pots and lids and that kind of stuff. So there's a tip for you. Cara, thank you. She made our barbecue sauce. Thanks, Mr. Patterson. Um, how do you rank potato salads? I think German salad is my champ. You know, I don't rank salads. Uh, I like a German potato salad, but I got to say, I was raised on the old mayonnaise egg, chopped up, cooked till it's almost mashed potato style. Uh, that's the one I think I posted as our, you know, classic American potato salad. So that would be my favorite. In fact, from what I'm told, that was my first sort of real human food I got to eat as a baby. So I think from a very early age, I was uh, kind of uh, raised to, you know, enjoy that style. Um, the vinaigrette potato salads I have a problem with only because they're generally made with red potatoes, which I'm not a huge fan of in a salad. I like a nice, starchy, highly absorbent potato. Uh, um, I want it to soak in the dressing and the mayonnaise or whatever we're dressing it with. And those waxier potatoes, they kind of, you know, they're a little standoffish with the vinaigrette and the dressing. They're like, you know, you can coat us, but we're not gonna really going to soak you in. So I'm not so much into that. Um, but a properly made German potato salad with the bacon, and the vinegar, I like it. I'll eat it. Uh, I never really am disappointed with potato salads. Give me a potato salad, I'm happy. Uh, Ms. Sherry, J.H., loves the standards. Cold rice salads, yes, that's an underrated one. Um, rice salad should be part of the rotation, the macaroni, the potato, the coleslaw. But you don't see as many rice salads, um, which is a great alternative. So uh, we'll, we'll count rice salads as a creative. Uh, the Chronicles wants to know, what is dry milk? That is not wet milk. That's what dry milk is. Um, it's actually a milk powder, I believe. I don't use much of it because I have access to milk. Um, Char made the asparagus soup this morning. That sounds good. Great end of spring idea. Although you get asparagus all year. So seasonality is kind of a lost thing nowadays with the modern food chain. Um, you know, asparagus used to be like a spring thing. Now you can get asparagus in February. It doesn't matter. At least, you know, it's in the, it's at, it's at the store. It might not be that good, but, uh, Simon has an idea for a tomato and mint salad, light, refreshing cucumber, lemon dressing, but it's harder to work with cucumber for a light dressing. How might you go about that? Uh, well, I don't know why it would be hard to you, you, cucumber in a light dressing. Um, I don't know if it would be of any help, but if you go to our smashed cucumber salad video, maybe try that technique. Um, but I'm not quite sure what you mean by harder to work with. Uh, do you, I don't know if you mean because the uh, cucumber overpowers a light dressing. I'm not sure. Hi, Donna Lamb. She's making our barbecue sauce, but can't find ribs at the grocery store. Always buy your ribs first, then worry about the sauce. But anyway, I hope you find some. Hey, Barbara, 
Do you make dill pickle soup? Um, I don't think I've ever made dill pickle soup. Excuse me. But uh, I would probably enjoy that. It sounds tangy. It sounds a little bit on the sour side. I like hot sour soup. So um, I might have to try dill pickle soup. Is there a good season for that? When it's summer, I don't, I try not to do too many soup recipes because that's more I like to say for the winter and the fall months when it's nice and cold and chilly. Um, but anyway, I have nothing against dill pickle soup. Hey, Ellen, uh, my Ropa Vieja recipe saved your relationship. Wow. You're welcome. Uh, now do you have one to make him propose? No, it's not necessarily the food. It's the two bottles of wine you serve with whatever recipe of ours you're trying. That, I've heard, can work. So uh, you got to grease the wheels, and good luck to you. Um, by the way, just a little, you know, relationship advice from an old old timer. Uh, if you got to get them drunk to propose, you know, maybe just keep things how they're going now. I don't know. I don't want to get too deep into the, uh, into the personal lives here. But uh, in general, we don't want to be tricking people into proposing or, you know, seducing them with a nice meal uh, because they should want to propose even after a bad meal. So uh, anyway, but hey, if I can be of help, very good. I'm fine with that. Thanks, Frank. Welcome aboard. Andrew's making our ribs and potato salad today. See his secret dry rub or a secret in his dry rub curry powder. Oh, yeah. Hate to break it to you, Andrew. It's not a secret. A lot of, lot of southern barbecue restaurants actually put curry powder in their dry rub. True story. Uh, so uh, you're in good company with your secret ingredients. A lot of the famous pit masters, uh, that's why when they're on those shows, they show their sh shaker bottle and they give you all the ingredients for their, you know, sauce and their ribs. And then they go, but I can't tell you what's in this. You know why? Because there's curry powder in it. Um, oh, Carmine, uh, peach and tomato salad works well. Yes. Very good creative side dish. Peaches and tomatoes sounds weird, but it really does work. So if you've never tried that, give it a try. I think peaches are uh, available now. Uh, let's see here. Ellen. Whoops, that was an old one. Here we go. The thing did the thing where it flew by. I got to catch up now. Frank, hello, Germany. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I tried your recipe yet, but I will. Frank sent me a recipe for uh, German potato salad, but it had mayonnaise based. So that's interesting. Uh, so people are giving each other uh, cookware advice. Very good. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Frank loves the shishaka, shishuka uh, recipe. Yes, it is very adaptable. Thanks, David. Uh, Tasty Chronicles likes roasting eggplant, lemon olive oil, telling parsley. Eggplant is a very controversial side dish. Um, people are very like, some people that don't like eggplant, like really don't like it. You will ruin their whole picnic experience if you slap some what they consider offensive eggplant on the plate. Um, and it's one of those things that's usually textural so, because I'll, I've made fried eggplant sandwiches before and people that have sworn they would never eat an eggplant in their life uh, can't get enough of those because it's crispy. And then it's soft and creamy inside and they like that. I think it's the dishes where it's just, so, I hate using the term slimy, but there are eggplant side dishes where the texture is kind of slimy-ish. Those are the ones that really get the people that don't like eggplant. So uh, maybe dice your eggplant, fry it in a hot pan, make a salad out of that, and see if your, your crew uh, appreciates that a little more. Deep, our pizzas get him lots of compliments. That's what we're here for, getting people lots of compliments. Omar, that sounds like a delicious cabbage salad. Everybody check out Omar's salad. I can't read. There's too many ingredients. That sounds really good. <coughs> uh, 
Excuse me. <clears throat> Snake Diane is, likes the relationship advice. Um, maybe a, a whole channel where I just do that. There would be so many broken marriages. I probably should not do that. I would get sued many times over, I'm sure. Jeff wants some more Korean side dishes. Um, I would like that too. Uh, the banchan, the, all the assorted pickle and relishes and side dishy things you get when you go to Korean barbecue, one of the best things ever. Uh, what I like about that is that generally for about half of them, I have absolutely no idea what I'm eating, but I just eat it and I smile and I like it. Uh, but one of these days I'll research that and find out what all those things are and I'll do some recipes. Sorry, just resting the voice and catching up on the questions. Oh, Swingman wants to know, uh, did you hear, did I hear you say you played the music for your intro and outro? Uh, well, you might've heard me say that. I say so many things, but no, I don't play piano. Um, that intro is a copyright free clip from a million years ago. Uh, I don't even remember where it came from. It's called Buddy. Um, that's why you hear it on like a million videos online, which is always amusing. People will email me, Chef John, so-and-so is using your intro. You should contact your legal department. And I, I'm always like, yeah, legal department. Good one. Um, but anyway, no, that's a very common uh, intro clip called Buddy. If you Google Buddy, you'll actually find it online. Thanks, David. Thanks, Ken3. Appreciate the popcorn emoji. Thanks, Eric. How he's using our videos to teach his sons to cook. That is some good parenting. Uh, they made shrimp and grits on Friday. Very good. Teach your kids how to cook. It will keep them out of trouble and out of hospitals. Keep, teach them how to cook. Why don't, why don't they teach cooking in schools? Can someone tell me that? Can we not sneak in like a couple hours a week for basic cooking skills? Don't understand that. Um, and now I, so I sound like Jamie Oliver. I've heard him go off on this diatribe. But anyway, I never understood some of the classes they teach in high school that could be, uh, you know, done with a smartphone, like basic, you know, adding and subtracting. Let's use that time for cooking classes. Is that controversial? <clears throat> Problem. Thanks, Rebecca. Yes, Andrew, like I said, you're in good company. Oh, Workday here. Whoops. Workday wants to know how do you convert a Mayo hater? You don't. You don't. Um, in fact, I think my mother in law Peggy is a Mayo hater. And I don't remember if she's eaten my salads that have Mayo in it. I'll have to check back with her. I don't think I've converted her. Um, I'm not sure about the mayo. It's a weird childhood thing that people don't like mayo as a kid, and then they never really get over it. Um, so don't try to convert the mayo hater. Just serve it anyway. And if they're hungry enough, they'll eat it, and maybe eventually they decide they like it. Uh, thank you. I'm going to screw up your name, but I'm going to thank you anyway. Uh, Prashant Khan. Chandia, is that even close? Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks, Holly D. Cliff V, I have a cookbook you wrote a long time ago. When are you gonna do a Food Wishes cookbook? I'm tired of printing them out. I know, I gotta do a cookbook. I have no time with the new uh, the new studio and the gentleman farmer lifestyle and, and then doing my usual two videos a week and then the chats and oh man, I'm so overworked uh, as I pretend to complain. Um, but one of these days we're going to do a cookbook. I, I, I always joke. I'm going to be the last YouTuber food blogger slash, uh, internet cooking personality guy to do a cookbook. Once everyone else has done one, then I'll do mine. Uh, and then I will have the last laugh. I will be the, I will be the, the final act and everyone else will have been a warm up cookbook. That's my official line. Uh, Cohen, thank you very much. 
Whoops, all the questions just jumped ahead. Uh, Great Tomato Girl got a fig tree for her birthday. Fig recipes. I got to do a Fig Newton. That's my favorite fig recipe. Um, but you're probably talking about fresh figs. I think we did a video a long time ago where we grilled some fresh figs and did some kind of salad. Oh, burrata cheese. I'm starting to remember. So get yourself some burrata cheese, slice your figs in half, grill them, balsamic vinaigrette, olive oil, salt, pepper, crusty bread. Man, that was good. And I'm not a big fig person, fresh fig. Uh, uh, Will Patterson, Patterson, sorry, I always say Patterson. Uh, Mr. Patterson says they taught cooking in middle school, his middle school. That's good to hear. That's why you turned out so well. See, you are living proof of the power of teaching cooking in school. Thanks, Janice. Home ec. Yep. That, now, home ec, you, did, I think you probably chose to take that, correct? Uh, I'm talking about forcing every student that goes into a grade school to learn to cook. So that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I took the optional home ec too. It was either shop class or home ec. And I, it was like, make an ashtray with a bunch of guys or a bird feeder with a bunch of guys or make chocolate chip cookies with all the ladies. And I was like, am I missing something here? What, why is everyone taking shop class? So yes, I took home ec too. Uh, shout out to Donna Adams if she's watching somewhere. Uh, in my home ec class, uh, we, did, we had to do a simulated wedding marriage thing. And I was the groom, and Donna Adams was my uh, lovely bride. And uh, I'll never forget that. We had to dress up in tuxes and dresses, and it was pretty funny. Uh, and hey, I'm Marie, if you're watching too. A uh, couple of old, old great friends from back in my hometown. Uh, thank you, Ta Tanya. Ta Tanya. Sometimes the easy names I make sound hard. And the hard names sometimes I'll make sound easy by mispronouncing them. Um, oh, Robin's uh, clarifying. Schwabs, Schwabs, meat and fish poultry is in Palo Alto. They're known for their fried steak. Well, then, are they? I will have to go check them out. Are they open? Are we allowed to go to restaurants now? Um, Jim, is there any difference between grading and ice cold butter and cutting the butter into pastry mix. I think you mean grating. Um, no, not really. Same difference. As long as your butter's in tiny little pieces, when you mix it into the flour, when you make a pastry, that's all you need. Great Tomato Girl taught home economics. Yes, that does age you. I thought you were really young. That's fine. We're all young at heart. Uh... Cohen wants to know my favorite. You are the blank of your blank rhyme. I don't have one. Um, I always, you know, the one I remember is the di you're the disco stew of your stew's hue because it just is, flows out the tongue very nicely. And I'm a huge Simpsons fan. Um, but someone actually did a compilation of all the you are the of your rhymes. And it's pretty funny. There's like 100 on there. So check that out. I think I shared that a long time ago. Um just Google Chef John compilation and it'll probably come up. All right. Whoops. They just jumped ahead. Hold on. Let me re let me re engage. Thanks, Chad. Prelude wants a cold Polish pork based borscht. Uh, sent me the recipe years ago. You probably did. I get a lot of email, sorry people, if I haven't responded to your email or I didn't get to your recipe, I get just way too much email, it's ridiculous. Uh, so that's my excuse. Thanks, Chad. Uh, Katie Lynch wants to know that she's a boomer. Uh, they used to teach cooking in high school, but only for girls. Boys took shop, I know, how, how ridiculous is that? Should be the opposite, right? Uh, Eric wants to know thoughts on doing a ramen recipe. You know, I've experimented 
it's never even close to as good as a ramen place. So then I get discouraged and I give up and just go have ramen. Um, but we should probably try one. It's just really hard to make a really good ramen at home. Although that's such a horrible attitude for why not to try things. So uh, I don't know. We're going to, we're going to try it one of these days. Jeff said we use kosher salt in our salt and pepper ribs, right? Yeah. Kosher is not a religious thing when it comes to salt. It's just the name of the salt. Um, now, of course, it's used for kosher cooking. That's true. But the reason we use it as chef types, it has a nice big grain. It's easy to sprinkle. It doesn't stick to your fingers. Uh, it's fluffier, lighter, easier to measure everything. Um, so, yeah, it does get confusing sometimes because people will use the same amount of fine table salt, which and then they'll go, oh, man, your recipe was so salty. Um, yeah, a tablespoon of kosher salt is only like a teaspoon and a half, maybe two teaspoons, depending on the brand, of the fine, fine table salt. So, no, we're using kosher salt. We're talking about the grind of it, basically. It's a larger crystal salt. Kosher salt tends to be that. And table salt is table salt. Plus, kosher salt is pure. It's just salt. It doesn't have iodine and all the weird stable, you know, non- what is it? Non-caking agents and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Jeff's got mint going crazy. What's your favorite recipe is using mint? Well, for summertime, what you want to do is cut up a watermelon into cubes. And then you want to take some feta cheese and you want to crumble it into that bowl of watermelon cubes. Uh, or if you're a baller, you could use a baller. And then you'll do a simple rice wine, olive oil vinaigrette, salt and pepper, and then the last touch, the thing that takes it over the top is a giant handful of freshly chopped mint. You toss that and mint, watermelon, feta salad is one of the greatest things of all time in the summer. Um, shout out to my cousin, Danielle. I think that's her favorite uh, summer, one of her favorite summer recipes she makes. Um, R.A. loves our potatoes bravas. Uh, one of your favorite meals now. Very, very good. That's one of my favorite things of all time. How long does aioli last in the fridge? I have no idea. I never can answer that. How long do things aioli last in the fridge? I have no idea. I never can answer that. How long do things last? Because very rarely does food become poisonous in your fridge. It'll become unpalatable and you don't want to eat it that's when it's bad right away so if you smell it and it smells good and it still tastes good it's good it's not like it went bad and you don't know it it's not like it tricks you into you know poisoning yourself so people get a little too uh, how long does this last uh, it, la it should be eaten make a batch of aioli that you're going to eat in a couple of days and you don't have to worry about it so uh yeah i can't answer that Things that have salt and acid in them and, and or sugar last a long time and they almost don't go bad. They just will um, look really bad and dry out and sometimes mold grows on things. That's a good clue. Maybe get rid of it. <coughs> Akash, thank you very much. Pick a savory recipe for my 10-year-old Aria to tackle. There's so many. Um... Well, I'm assuming you guys eat everything. So a savory recipe that a 10-year-old should tackle would be our famous peppers, uh, what is it? Potatoes, peppers, chicken, and sausage. It doesn't really have a name. It was just those four ingredients. It's just a beautiful baked roasting pan of those four ingredients, peppers, potatoes, sausage, and chicken. And it will show off all the knife skills, all the... Uh, mixing, the tasting, the how long should it cook. It's a good recipe to, to cook for a 10-year-old. Well, wow, several people have taught cooking to kids, Jeff included. Oh, but not in the U.S. Oh, well. Oh, uh, W. Pattison says we had to take home ec for a semester. Now I feel better. And another semester with shop where you made you made a wood clock. <laughs> Very good. Better than the ashtrays my 
my friends in shop class were making. I'm like, dude, you're 14. What are you doing with an ashtray? And why are you encouraging your parents to smoke if that's who it's for? So I never really figured out the ashtray. Uh, I think it was just something you could make on a lathe that they, uh, or was it a router? Uh, I don't know. Frank made some tasty duck breast with fig sauce. That's a good use for fresh figs, I agree. Thanks, X N Zing, Zing Chen. Am I saying that right? Everyone spell their names phonetically if it's even remotely difficult. Uh, Pam wants to know uh, my favorite Fourth of July recipe. I don't have one. Um, just give me a nice grilled burger with some potato salad. I'm not. I'm not picky. Uh, as long as there's potato salad on the plate, I'm good. Uh, Coleslaw recipes are so easy. Um, the simpler, the better, I think. And don't be afraid to massage and crush your cabbage. After you chop it, give it a massage with your hands until it becomes soft and juicy. Um, and then dress it and see if that makes a difference. If you don't like coleslaw, give it the old palm and finger massage and see what happens. Uh, iced coffee recipes. No, is that a recipe? I think you just make iced coffee. If you haven't tried our cold brew coffee that we did a few years ago, try that. I was really impressed. I thought that was like a whole like gimmick, like everything's a gimmick. But I was uh, sadly mistaken. It was actually a really, really nice, um, really nice thing to drink. And the flavor was different. It was good. Thank you. Nick, thank you very much. Just made another batch of your no-need bread. Uh, yes, of all the pictures I see online that make me feel good, and they all do, uh, I always feel extra good when I see people making homemade bread uh, because that's like such a primal, uh, primitive joy when it comes to cooking, making your own bread, the fermentation process, just how it looks. I mean, nothing feels like bread dough. If you've never, I mean, I'm assuming everyone on this chat has made some type of bread. Is that a safe assumption? If not, make that like your project for the weekend. Just there's nothing that feels like it, smells like it, and then you're done and you're looking at a loaf of bread that just costs you, you know, pennies to make, and it's better than the stuff from the store if you did it right. And there's nothing bad about making your own bread. People are seconding, seconding the second team, the suggestions of the potato, peppers, potato, chicken, and sausage. See, that's so hard to say. We need a name for that recipe. I know I asked when we posted that, but uh, we never got, we never really got a good answer to that. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you for joining. And people are thanking me. Don't thank me. I thank you. You thank me just by watching. So uh, I appreciate the thanks. Not necessary. Uh, having said that, keep it up. Keep them coming. Uh, oh, iced tea concentrate would be a great video for summertime. What is iced tea concentrate? Is that powdered tea? Is that how it's made? Wow, I just have never even considered how instant iced tea is made. Having said that, why are we making instant iced tea? Oh, I know what you mean. You mean like a really strong regular tea that you then thin out with ice water and make regular tea. Is that what you're talking about? I, I think I'm confused. Uh, Rebecca Nixon, uh, what about some good corn side recipes? Yes, corn side recipes are good. Here's the one problem. The best corn sides require you shaving those kernels off the ear, uh, which some people consider a pain to do. I don't because you got a sharp knife, it takes just a few seconds. But that's the big sticking point. And if you're not gonna cut the corn off the cob, uh, you might as well just eat corn on the cob since that's like the ultimate way to eat corn. So yes, I love a good corn side dish, um, but it's I always feel bad we're making people shave the corn off. Having said that, the 
corn, just simple with a, a simple dressing with some ancho chili, uh, some Mexican cheese, queso fresco uh, on top, um, some, maybe some cilantro if you swing that way. Uh, that is one of the great side dishes of all time. Oh, lime. You got to have some squeeze of lime in there. Workday Gourmet, what is your favorite herb and dish to use it? Can't answer. Don't have a favorite herb. They're all my favorites. All right. I like the classics. Rosemary with roasted meat, you know, uh, a mint to finish a lamb dish. So if they're herb meat combos that have been used for a thousand years, go with those. Those have been tested out. Everyone loves those. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I say. Don't go against history. Repeat, repeat history, which is the opposite of that other saying. Yeah, Space said it's simple syrup infused with like 20 tea bags and lemon zest. All right, sounds good. But then you have to have the sugar in there. I guess that's fine. Raise your hand if you made the whiskey sour or simple syrup for your whiskey sour and you have some left. You could use that for tea. <clears throat> By the way, my trip to Atlanta one year, uh, I watched someone make authentic Southern style sweet tea. And I literally thought it was a joke. I thought I was being punked because they took a thing of tea, like, you know, a regular uh, container of tea. And they just took like a, a bag of sugar and they were like, tss, tss, and it was like pounds of sugar in this tea. And it was like, I didn't think physically like, that liquid could hold that much sugar. I, I was I was waiting for it to crystallize. And they're like, no, that's how we drink it. And then I took a sip and, you know, almost went into a coma. It was crazy. So I don't know how you folks down there survive on that stuff. Um, it must be some kind of, you build up an immunity to it. But the first time I ever saw actual sweet tea being made, I could not believe my eyes. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? John, that's good. John made Italian bread for uh, a restaurant or baked bread for an Italian restaurant. I assume they called it Italian bread. Oh, soul crushing, lost your starter. That is a sad story. Now I feel bad for you. Pam made a dress. They had to, they had to take home back and make a dress and wear it to school. Man, I would love to see those pictures. I didn't have to make a dress, uh, but I would like that. All right, now we're going to get the uh, sweet tea stories here coming from the South. House wine of the South, yes. And yes, a few people made our whiskey sour. That was good. That was a great suggestion. Um, thank you, Jason. Ooh, we only have seven minutes left. Uh, if I missed your question, just repost it. I'm trying to scroll back up to see what I missed. Hello, Scott Man Montana. Thank you to all the new members who joined. So appreciate it. And to all the OGs that joined many, many months ago, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully I'll have a few pictures today of some ripe Santa Rosa plums from Kismet. Uh, not sure what we're going to do with them. Probably just eat them. Uh, but if those make it into a recipe, I will definitely share that. Thank you, Harlan. And by the way, uh, be safe this uh, 4th of July coming up weekend. Um, it is so frustrating not being able to do like normal quote unquote things. But, uh, you know, I'm paranoid about this virus spreading again. So, uh, We've all had to been, you know, be shut in all these months. It would be kind of stupid if we just were like, all right, I'm going out, tired of staying inside. And then it started again and we had to do all this over. That would not be fun. So uh, I don't want to bring everyone down, but be safe. Just go picnic, stay, you know, stay this far, eight, six, eight feet away from strangers. And uh, it'll still be fun. Eric Ridge wants to know my most epic food cooking fail. <clears throat> Let me have a sip of water before I tell you that one. 
Um, you know, I always think about the, I think I told it in the last chat, actually. Uh, I was invited by a girlfriend to cook for her friends and she had some vegan pasta that didn't have anything in it to hold it together. And it fell apart in the water when I cooked it. And she also didn't have a strainer. So by the time I fished it out, it would look like wet strands of oatmeal. And then I had to serve it to people while she told them I was a, a you know, a chef. That was embarrassing. So that was, that's the most memorable fail. Um, but there's probably many, many, many others. The more you cook, the more you fail. That's just a fact of life. Uh, but the more you fail, the more you cook. No, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, you don't, uh, no guts, no glory is I think what I'm trying to say. So you're going to fail if you cook, you got to cook anyway. And you just eat the failures and you learn. It's all about the learning process. Uh, am I keeping my big green egg at Kismet? Well, we're talking about that. Um, I'm thinking it might be more expensive to move than actually get a new one since it's 8 million pounds and that it, it's in that big table. But we're going to figure that out. Don't worry. All right, let me get these last these questions because we're going to sign off in about five minutes, although I sometimes go a little bit out over time. Uh, you never know. Depends on my mood. Uh All right, I got that one. Focaccia dip with creamy buffalo dip. Focaccia bread with creamy buffalo dip. Sounds good, great. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, thank you. Welcome aboard. What are you drinking there? I can't see your icon's too small. Looks like a beer. Enrico's making chicken broth. Why not throw in a couple T-bones from yesterday's dinner? Go ahead. Not gonna hurt it. Bones is bones. Uh, it's not going to really make it that much better, but it, it would look cool. A couple T-bones floating in your chicken stock. Why not? Oh, elote. Thank you, Howie. That's what I was trying to remember, elote. That's my favorite <clears throat> favorite corn side dish. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Getting down to the end. Epic cooking fail. I did that one. Have I considered making a Pisco sour? Yes, I have. Um, thank you, uh, Marie Jo. Love the t-shirts. Uh, Jim asked about the green egg. We're going to try. <clears throat> Cream side dishes. Jeff, we're going to try. What's a good hot summer side dish for people who, who refuse to eat cold food? Workday gourmet. Who are these people? They were going to your picnics and demanding hot food. I mean, come on. I need to talk to these people. Side dishes at picnics and cookouts are cold. That's because you make them ahead of time, and you put them out on a picnic table. And what do they want? Chafing dishes? Steam, steam table at the picnic? I'm upset by this question. We will, not, we will not enable these people. All right? If they want a hot side dish... I don't know what to tell them. I guess baked beans you could keep in a metal container on the side of the grill or some chili. I don't know. Now I'm all flustered. There's always got to be some people causing problems, wanting something you're not supposed to have. Uh, uh, Omar, do I ever go back and watch recipes when you're cooking? Yeah, it's all what I do most of the time. When I'm not making videos, I'm watching my own videos. And I'm saying, that was such a funny comment. Man, that was a good recipe. Ooh, look at that knife work. So, yeah, I do. Uh, I'm a fan of the videos. No, I don't watch that many. Um, but I do go back when I'm trying to remember if I did something. And then I'll be like, wow, why did I do it that way? I should do it this way. <clears throat> Bill, can't wait for the plum picks. Yes, plums are delicious. And these were looking really good. Oh, yeah, Dee's reminding me uh, my big food failure was cauliflower fries. Well, that wasn't necessarily my failure. That was whoever had the stupid idea that cauliflower could be made into fries and then emailed me and asked me to make them. That's who should get blamed. You know who you are. Thank you for that suggestion. So it was just a terrible concept. Uh, it wasn't like – I consider a failure like it's something good and then you screw it up. Like pasta is good, but I made – that horrible pasta. <clears throat> so, but yes, as far as a video fail, 
the cauliflower fries is was pretty epic. And if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that video. It was such a waste of time. Uh, Great Tomato Girl says their neighbors work for Google. They told teleworkers not to expect to come back to their offices until December or even 2021. Yep, that's right here. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Howie. Oh, my God. Thank you, Howie. You're the best. Howie's the man. All right, let me finish up here. Uh, Eric, please consider doing a video on basic and advanced knife usage. Yeah, you know what I should do instead of that? I might do that. But I should maybe on some of the shorter videos spend a few minutes showing cutting more of the ingredients. Um, I always feel like I'm wasting time and you want to see the actual recipe. But I should probably cut some things because there's lots of tips that's better to give in context of a recipe. Just like here's how you hold a knife and here's how you slice. It's It depends on what you're making, really, the knife use. Sometimes you want to chop down. Sometimes you want to slice. So uh, it depends. Thank you, Swing Man. Happy, happy to enlighten you any way I can. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Steak Dan is a good suggestion. Baked potatoes wrapped in foil stay hot a long time. You can put those in a, in a, in a thermal cooler thing, and your high-maintenance friends who have to have hot food can have those. <clears throat> I mean, come on. All right, Jim. I'll, I'll send me an email. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if that works. <clears throat> I'll even sign it for you. And again, thank you, Howie. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Making everyone else look bad. Very good. Yes. Yeah, okay. Everyone wants knife skills video. Fine. I'll try to do that. Thanks, John. Oh, man, we're two minutes over time. All right, let me wrap this up. I got to go to Kismet and do work. I got to paint. Man, do I hate to paint. Painting's the worst. But it's going to look nice when it's done. All right, Bill's going to make bread. Very good. Shamed him into it. Thank you, Sharon. Spacehead, thank you. Oh, wait, we're not supposed to hold baked potatoes. Uh, you can get botulism. Is that true? Uh, Howie, corporate overlords prevent you from drinking beer during the chat. No. No, my corporate overlords are very, very benevolent. They would totally let me drink beer. I just can't drink beer at 11 in the morning and then drive to Kismet and work all day. Uh, but don't worry. I'll have a beer there later in your honor. All right. Bye, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye now. Hope you have a beautiful rest of the Sunday weekend. It's almost over, but, you know. You still got a full, almost a full day. I uh, hope you make something delicious. Don't forget to share it, uh, a picture of it on Twitter and or Instagram. And uh, I need to, again, I'll say this on every chat, need to work on an ending. I don't want to use the video ending of and as always enjoy because that's like the video thing. So what I'll do is just what I've been doing. I'll just ramble for a few seconds and then wave and then miss the end stream button and then make an awkward look, and then say goodbye again. All right, here we go. Ready? Thank you, everybody. Appreciate all the new members. Uh, we'll do this in a couple weeks. Stay tuned for that. A couple great videos coming up this week. A beautiful antipasto pasta salad. And I forget, something else that's really delicious. What's the next video, Michelle? She's She's getting ready. She can't hear me. Anyway, any pasta, pasta salad. Oh, bacon wrapped double dogs. Yes. Bacon wrapped double dogs. We totally improved the bacon wrapped hot dog. You're not going to believe it. It's incredible. All right, I'm seriously going to say goodbye. I'm going to hit the end stream. Here we go. End stream. And yes, I missed again. Let me try that again. <clears throat> end stream. Bye. Oops, I got to hit another button. Are you sure you want to end your stream? Yes. People are saying, please end the stream. Here we go. Bye.